What is going on everyone, it's Mr. Uzi here, and in today's video I'm going to show you how powerful of a PC you can get for around $400 when you're open to buying used. So without any further ado, let's begin. The case I used was an Antec GX500. First up, for the CPU, I chose AMD's FX8320, which is an 8-core CPU, which is great for rendering. To keep it cool, I chose Cooler Master's Hyper 212 Plus, which keeps it at around 45 degrees Celsius, even under load, while overclocked to about 4.4 GHz. For the motherboard and RAM, I chose Gigabyte's 970A UD3 and 16 GB of Corsair Vengeance. For the graphics card, I chose Sapphire's HD7950, which I have overclocked to about 1150 MHz on the core and 1500 MHz on the memory clock. For storage, I have a 120GB 840 EVO for boot and a 1TB Western Digital Blue for mass storage. And powering all of this is Antex Earthwatt's 80 plus bronze 750 watt power supply. It's definitely a little overkill for this build, but it's great to know that I can upgrade to something more powerful in the future. Now let's move into performance. In 3D Mark's Fire Strike, I get a score of 7137. This is a pretty decent score and translates well into real world games. In Dragon Age Inquisition with max details minus anti-aliasing we see an average of 45, a minimum of 30, and a maximum of 59. For this test and subsequent tests I keep anti-aliasing off because of the performance hit it causes and it doesn't add too much to visual quality. In Far Cry 4 with max details and no AA we see a similar story, an average of 45, minimum of 28, and a maximum of 69. In Battlefield 4 single player we see an average of 67, a minimum of 55, and a maximum of 93. Due to some technical difficulties I wasn't able to get multiplayer benchmarks but I'm sure that it would perform equally as well. Finally we have Borderlands a pre-sequel. This isn't the most demanding title but this computer definitely flexes its muscle. Average of 105, minimum of 44, and a maximum of 163, well over the refresh rate of my monitor and many monitors that are out there on the market. Now, what does this video mean? Well, first off, if you're building a computer and your budget is below $500, I would probably recommend that you don't buy all of your parts new. Not saying that new parts are bad, but you can probably find a really good deal on a used GPU, CPU, motherboard, or even RAM that can help you save money, one, and also let you get a better part than getting it brand new because it's less expensive. Now, buying new isn't bad, but buying used is definitely an option if money is a problem or if money isn't necessarily the easiest thing to come by. Now, I was able to do this, and if you're keeping track of the totals and all the parts, the total was right around $400 with tax and shipping included. So you can see that you're definitely getting a decent performing computer for under $500 considering that you're buying used parts and buying new parts when it's necessary. Things like cases and storage are definitely things you want to buy new because they can degrade over time and they really you don't want them to die on you. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button and if you haven't already, please subscribe. You don't want to miss any videos coming from this channel. And also as a challenge to all of you guys out there, I want you to try and put together a PC on PC Part Picker that rivals this computer that comes in at least at this price and I'll let you go at least to $550 just to make it a little bit fair. I want to see if there's really that much benefit in buying used. I think I'm going to win, but just try to anyway. Anyway, thanks guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.